Let's let's start in on the last bit of what we have to do here to make this data service and web API all connect into our app. So we are to the point where the express web app that we made, where we have uh, HTTP uh, REST API calls that we can make in order to get our bridge data. We need to hook that into our app so that the menu on the left and also the detail that we're going to show on the map and um, with the info across the top for a given bridge, we want that to be uh, set up. So we have to make a number of changes. The way that we're going to do this in Angular is we're going to use services and we're going to use um, the HTTP client in order service in order to connect to our web API. So I want to do this in a number of steps, talk you through it, and um, hopefully it'll make sense as we go. So what we what we really want to do, we want to begin by creating a class which is going to manage all of our data access. So I want to create um, a, new a new type of class that isn't going to be a component. It's going to be used by, or we will say consumed by, components and other classes within our system and our app that we're building. So I want to have a standalone class. It doesn't provide any kind of UI, and it has it's very focused in what it does. In this case, it's going to provide a set of data services for the rest of the app. And the way that we're going to build this class, we're going to let Angular manage its creation. So at runtime, when it gets created and how it gets uh, set up and shared across different classes and so on. And so we're going to do this by creating what's called a service. So this is what's nice about this approach is it's going to mean that in our different components, we don't have to repeat the same code over and over again. I don't have to write the same boilerplate for connecting, let's say, to a REST API, fetching data, and performing some common op set of operations that multiple components need to do. In our case, we have multiple components that need, need to talk to the REST API. So we're going to create this class and I'm going to do it using uh, the following command. So I'm going to ask Angular to generate for me not a component but a service and I'm going to call my service data manager. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to generate a new file. You can see that it's created this new file here, data manager service.ts, and it's created this basically empty class that we can start to work with. So a couple of notes about what's going on here. The first thing that you'll see is that this class has been decorated with the injectable. And so what's going to happen is Angular is going to take care of dealing with this class as a dependency for other classes in our system. So in our components that need to consume this, Angular will take care of injecting that into the class. We're going to write code in a second to inject it in. But this idea of doing dependency injection is big in Angular. And what Angular will do is it will create singleton instances, or in other words, it'll create a single instance that it can share across multiple components, multiple services can use it. And so we're not going to directly invoke the constructor or try and manage an instance. We'll let Angular do that. And the only thing we're going to do here is we're going to tell Angular that we want this to be, Angular is going to create what's called a, a default injector. So the root injector for our entire app, this is what we'll take care of injecting this class, our data manager service into our components and so on. Okay, so the very the most basic thing we could do in our data service, if you remember how we're currently dealing with our data, we have a menu component, and the menu component is importing our bridges module. And if you'll recall, the bridges module looks like this. It's basically a, a, a glorified JSON file, but what we've done is we've wrapped it up so that it has a little bit of typing info uh, and it's essentially an array of bridges. And the bridges are going to get pulled in so that the menu component keeps track of that on a member of the class, the bridges member, and it's of type array and it's an array of bridge objects. Okay, 
So the first thing we could do is we could move the management of this so that it doesn't happen here, it happens in our service. So let's do that. I'm going to take this and I'm going to remove it from the menu component. And in our data manager service, what I'll do is I'll throw it in here instead. And I'll have to get the paths to be correct, like so. And instead of grabbing it like this, okay, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pull my data service into, so this class here needs to be pulled into our menu component so that we can, we can work with it. So that's what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to come over and I'm going to say that I want to import the data manager service from my class file, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject this as a dependency into this component. So we've actually seen this happen once before. Let me, let me show you the syntax. So in the constructor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define another member, a private member. I'm going to call it data service, just so it's clear how this maps back to what we're building. And the type is going to be data manager service, like so. And so this we're going to be injecting it into our component. So we're not going to worry about creating it. Angular is going to worry about creating it. And if we need to have multiple instances of it, which we're going to, Angular is going to deal with the fact that there's going to be multiple instances of it that need that all need to be shared. And we have to have an instance that's available in memory, et cetera, et cetera. So that's good. So we don't need to do this anymore. OK, so we've got the service in here. So now in the most basic case, what we could, what, basically what we want to be able to do is instead of setting the bridges here like this, let's, the very first step we're going to do is pull the bridges out of the data service and let's, let's add a method. So get bridges is needs to be called. Now, get bridges doesn't exist yet. So we need to mo let's modify things so that it does. So what we're going to do here, essentially we need to we need to return something that is an array of bridges over here. So we're going to add get bridges and get bridges is going to return an array of bridge objects. We don't have that yet, so let's import it. Like so. And save this. OK. So we have a, a very simple method, which is going to let's get our compiler back here, see how it's doing. There we go. We have a very simple um, method in our service. So far, we're doing nothing with our REST API, but we're just getting the idea. I want to be able to get somehow get a set of bridges. I want to return those bridges. And inside of the menu component, the menu component is going to have a slot, a member where we can we can store this uh, array of bridges. And we're going to inject our data service like so. Whoops, I have an error here. Um, I, I, no, I'm OK. I, we need to inject our data service and we need to um, be able to call it. So in the constructor, I'm calling it and I'm saying, get me the, get me the bridges and store it, in the, store it in the bridges like this, okay? So 
that's fine, but we haven't really achieved anything new because we still have all of that. Like we remember what our goal is. Our goal is we have like, I think this is over a megabyte of data in our bundle. So we just have tons and tons of data, which is being statically built into, statically built into our module, into our bundle. And um, it's problematic because it's going to increase the size of what we're building. This is not what we want to, not what we want to do. Like most of these bridges, I'm not going to need them at runtime. So what I want to be able to do is I want to opportunistically request data for a particular bridge only when I need it. And the rest of the time, I don't need to have it sitting in my bundle making, uh, you know, wasting a whole bunch of space. Okay. So what we need to do here is our data service really needs to talk over HTTP to our REST API. We still have this REST API running and we've got a couple of routes. We have the bridges route, which is the first one we're going to use. And we have the bridge bridges for a particular ID. So we want to, we want to start using, using these in order to make this work. Okay. So, in order to do this in Angular, what we're going to do is we're going to use the HTTP client. Uh, and so it is itself a service that we're going to need to add to our, our application. So in the same way in React or just in basic web development, if you're doing this in vanilla JavaScript in the browser, you would use XHR or you would use Fetch. You would use one of the built-in networking APIs to be able to talk with our REST API. Angular does the same thing, but Angular wraps it up for us into a really rich API, the HTTP client API, and they augment it with a whole bunch of useful features. So uh, really easy for doing testing. They have typed responses so that it plays well with TypeScript. They use the observables API, really good error handling, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of using promises or callbacks, we're gonna use observables. And I'm gonna try and keep this, this first time that we're doing this, keep it simple and just use subscriptions. Later on, there are some really fancy things we can do with RxJS observables and piping results um, and you know converting or mapping these observables as they come through, but I'm gonna try and keep it simple today. So the, fir the first step that we have to do is we have to go back to our app module, app module.ts, and inside app module, we're pulling in lots of core pieces of Angular in here to make them available to other parts of our system. So in the same way that the routing module is being included, and then the routing module is being imported here inside of our uh, base module, our app module, what I wanna do is I want to also import I want to import the HTTP client module from Angular common HTTP, like so. And I want to include that include that in my app so that I can start using it in other pieces inside of my code. So let's go and add this to our data manager service. Okay. So our data manager service, what I want to do is I want to go to, let's see here, data manager service. Okay. So, I need to import the HTTP client and I need to inject it as a dependency into my service. So when we talk about dependency injection, we're not just talking about in injecting dependencies into components. You can also inject a dependency into another service, which is what I'm gonna do now. So services can use other services. So we're gonna use a built-in service that is available to us through, um, through Angular. Okay, so let's do this. So I want to import the HTTP client, and I'm not gonna do the HTTP client module. I only do that at the top level of my app module. Here I wanna do HTTP 
client like so from same as a moment ago angular http so i'm going to pull this in and then what i want to do is i want to inject inject this into my my services class so i'm going to i'm going to add private i'm going to call it http and its type is going to be http client so we'll leave it to angular to take care of uh, creating the instance and making it making it available. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to modify the code that we have here. So instead of returning this set of bridges, I'm going to get rid of the bridges module. I, I don't want the bridges module to be part of what we include. I want to get I want to break it out of the bundle and now I'm going to consume this data from the database. So it's gone. So what we want to do is I want to wrap up the return type that I'm going to have here. I have to change this from being so currently this is a synchronous API. I am returning the array of bridges immediately. So you in, you invoke this method and the method returns immediately with a result and the result is an array of bridge objects. What I need to do is I need to turn this into an asynchronous call because I need to do it over the network. So anytime you're moving across a network boundary, you have the potential for this to take a long time. You have the potential for it to fail, but above all, it's not, it's not going to return immediately. So your code can't block. We don't want to block the main thread so that while we wait for this to download, so we're going to do it in the background and we have to make this asynchronous. So what I need to do here is I need to include um, an, the observable type from RxJS. So I'm going to import the observable type. And instead of returning an array of bridges like this, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to return an observable. And the observable is going to return a type like this, or it might get easier if I rewrite this like, like that. I don't know if that makes it easier or not. Use the alternate style of doing, uh, doing an array. So what this says is that I now have an asynchronous method, which will return immediately. So I still need to return something immediately in the same way that you would have a promise when you return a promise. So if we were doing this with promises, you know, you would say, um, you would call some function which returns a promise. So I would call it like say fetch. So I would do a fetch and then I would say dot then and I would have a function here. So this would be a function that would execute when this is completed. Well, it's a similar idea with an observable. I'm going to send back an object which you immediately have access to, which is like a promise, it is something that you can subscribe to, something that you can observe, and then in the future, it's going to return to you a piece of data. So we're going to return our um, our bridge. Now, the way that our API works in the back end is a little different than what we've been doing. If you'll recall, when I return all of the bridges like this, I'm calling my database.all and if you look at database.all, database.all is going to return an object which is reduced. It's only going to have the ID and the name, which is what I need in order to be able to do this here, but I don't need all of the data coming back. If I sent literally all the data, I've just traded one problem for another. So instead of putting all of the, the bridge data statically into my bundle, I've I've delayed it a little bit and I've now put all of the data into a single request that's going to in a response that's going to come back to um, our app. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break up my type. So right now we have bridge and bridge looks like the following. And what I wanna do is I want to break, break this into two pieces. So essentially I'd like to take these two out of here and put them into a new type. 
which I'm going to call the bridge ID. So the bridge ID is like uh, top level info about a bridge. It's ID and its name. I don't know. There might be a better name for this, but for now I'm going to say this is a bridge ID. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my current bridge type, it extends bridge ID. So a bridge is a bridge ID, but it's also augmented with all of these other members. So the rest of my code is going to be is going to work. So this is a like this is like a partial a partial type and then this is the full type. Full bridge information. Okay, so I'm going to save this and I'm going to I'm going to modify my data manager service so that instead of pulling in only bridge, I'm going to say I'm going to pull in bridge ID and I'm also going to pull in bridge. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this array to be of type bridge ID. So I'm going to return bridge ID instead of bridge. And while we're at it, before we forget, let's just change our menu. Our menu component also needs to deal with bridge ID. Instead of bridge. And this needs to be bridge ID. And this needs to be. So this dot bridges, it's probably unhappy with my typing is missing the following properties. Oh, sorry, I'm combining syntax. Let's let's do the same syntax throughout so I don't confuse you. I'm confusing myself. So I have an array of uh, bridge ID instances and let's save that and let's go back to our data manager service and this is bridge ID that's good this dot bridges we don't have this dot bridges anymore so that's this is an error that our, that our compiler is upset about this so let's fix this so we're not going to return bridges because we're no longer going to include bridges so what are we going to do so in our data manager service, what we're going to do is we're going to return. We're going to grab our HTTP client service instance, and we're going to do a get request. And we're going to do a get to our API, like so. Now, the get request, so this is very similar to doing an XHR or doing a fetch where you would say, I want to fetch from, like if I was doing this as a fetch, I would do something like, I would say uh, return fetch like that. And that would return a promise. And then the promise, I would have a thenable and I could take that and I could add in a callback on then a callback on catch. So I'm going to I'm going to modify this a little bit because what I want to do is I want to specify the type of data that's going to come back because really what this is going to do by default it's going to return like untyped javascript. So one of the nice features about http get when you're working in a typescript environment is you can provide here you can provide a type so I'm going to say that I want to I want to I want to type the response that comes back, the data that comes back on the body as an array of bridges, bridge IDs more specifically. Okay, so let's take a look here. So this looks good. It's still unhappy with me in the menu component. Uh, what doesn't it like? Oh. Okay, so this is a problem here in my constructor. The constructor is not the place to do any kind of asynchronous work. You always want a constructor to return quickly. So the only purpose of your constructor is to set up or do initialization of members, make sure that the object is good to be used, but you don't want to put any heavy lifting in here. So this doesn't belong here. What I really want to do, is I want to use a lifecycle hook, which I already have one down here. So in my components on init, 
that's where I want to do um, that's where I want to do this work. Just similar in the same way that you would wait for the component to mount in React, you want to wait for uh, on init to take place before you start messing around with this data. So the component exists and we're not going to block anything. And now we can do we can do our call. We can say this dot bridges is is equal to this dot data service dot get bridges. Okay, now this is not going to work exactly the way I want it to because it's going to complain. It says that this get bridges returns something of type observable. So we're returning an observable, which will eventually produce an array of bridge IDs. And bridges is typed up here, you can see it, as bridge ID. So we need to modify this code because we can't, we can't do it the way we're doing it here. So I'm going to say, take my, let's just break this down another line. So I'm going to take the data service, the data service, I'm going to call get bridges. And then on get bridges, I'm going to call uh, subscribe. So subscribe is going to allow me to pass in a function similar like you would with a then if you were if you were doing then and you wanted to say, OK, when this completes, I want to be able to have have this data and do something with it. We're going to do that here. So I'm going to subscribe to this observable and I'm going to say when the data comes back, it's going to be these bridge IDs. So I'm going to say data, take that data and this dot bridges is equal to the data. So just stick it into, into here. Now it's upset at me because I don't have um, subscription. This dot subscription is missing for the, for the following properties. Okay. Let me see what this is. Okay, I just took a second to debug this and this is a classic case of user error. So this is me uh, mixing my two programming models. I've got um, an expectation here of a synchronous response. So I'm expecting that this dot data service is going to return my bridges, which is what I was doing a moment ago, but that's not what I'm doing now. This is going to return an observable of bridge IDs. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do this. I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to move the code that sets that value inside of my as a callback or in, as an observer inside of um, the subscribe method here. So basically, just to review this, I'm gonna say take the data service, call the get bridges method. Get bridges method is gonna return an observable. I'm going to observe it or I'm going to subscribe to it. And when it is invoked, I'm going to get past the data and the data is going to be of type array of bridge IDs. And we're going to stick that into this.bridges, right? Okay, so let's save this and let's try again. Okay, so we run this and we run into the the least like if you're a web developer you've either run into this problem or you're going to run into this problem over and over and over again so i wanted to purposely make this mistake so that i could walk you through how you fix it so what i have here is i have i have a cores problem cross origin resource sharing so i want you to think about what we're doing I am running, I'm running a web app on an origin, localhost 4200. And I'm running an API server on localhost 3000. So I have two different origins. When you, when you are running applications across multiple origins, you have to opt in at the server side for sharing resources in different situations with clients. So browsers, browsers are interesting because there's certain resources that you can share across origin. So think about, for example, you can load an image from another website into your, so if I have a URL to an image or I'm, I can do it with like a JavaScript file or think of anything that's on a CDN, a CSS file, but I can't, I can't pull random data 
from random web servers, you know, without having cores being set. And cores is something that you have to control at the server side. So whenever you see this error, access to this API from this origin has been blocked by the cores policy, it actually tells you what the solution is. It says that you need to have this header. The access control allow origin header has to be present on the requested resource. So if you go to the network, you'll see that here's my request. And if you look at the headers that come back, you can see the list of headers that are here and none of them is specifying that cores is allowed. So let me walk you through how you fix this. Um, so just to be clear, if I were to, if I were to request this data and I say dash I, you'll see these are the headers. So this is in dash I includes the headers in curl. These are the headers that are coming back. It's JSON data. This is the length of the JSON data. This is the date it was, it was created, et cetera, the e-tag for this particular version. But we need to fix this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill the server and I'm gonna make some changes to the server. So this is actually not too bad. In the app, what we have to do here is we have to add a module. So Express has a module that you can add, npm install, and I'm gonna save it. It's called the cores module, cross-origin resource sharing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to specify that I want my app, well, first of all, I need to pull it in. So let's pull it in, const cores, cores like so. I'm gonna say app.use cores. So I'm gonna use the cores middleware and it's going to take care, because the cores middleware is happening really high up in my middleware stack, before any of these routes get called, the header is gonna get added into the response. So the response is gonna move through all of these different layers of middleware before it hits my router. So we could do this in a number of places and you can also set cores just on a specific, you know, like if I wanted to only put it on, if I wanted to put the middleware on a specific uh, part of the app or on a specific route, I could, but I'm just gonna put it like for now, I'm just gonna put it on the whole thing. So I'm gonna save this, restart my server and let's take a look at what happens when I do this call now. So if you take a look at the top versus the bottom here, you can see that I now have a new header that's been added. Access control allow origin star. So instead of having an asterisk there or a star, you could specify a particular domain. And a lot of times they'll do that in a production server. You might have, um, you might have the name of your production um, web app server, like you have a domain for your, for your site or for your app and you would stick it in here. So you're gonna allow domains, you're gonna allow that particular domain, but you're not gonna allow other domains. This one says, I'm basically gonna leave this thing wide open. So I'm not too worried about this because I'm, I'm doing as an example, but you could further restrict this if you wanted to um, keep it so the other, other services can't get at it. Okay, so let's, let's retry this. So let's see if, if, I hit a, if I refresh this now, what happens? So this time, if I go to my network, you'll see that Bridges comes back with a 200 response. And you'll see that the access control allow origin header is there, which means the browser allows this response to come through. And the browser response, the response looks like this. Okay, so that's great. So that means in our menu component, we are specifying that we, we need an array of bridge ID instances. And we're saying that we want to wait until our component is initialized. And then we want to ask our data service, whoops, ask our data service to go and get those bridges over the network. And then we subscribe to that data and we store it on our instance.
I've had to, sorry, I've had to pause and unpause this so many times. I've got such a massive rainstorm here. I can't even hear. <laughs> I can't, I can't even think over the, the rain, how loud it was against the window. Anyway, I think it's slowed down a little bit now. Sorry about that. So let's, let's keep going with this. Um, I want to extend this data manager service so that in addition to getting a single bridge, what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to update the entire flow of my application so that the data is going to come out of the service rather than being passed down as props all the way like we were doing before. So if you'll recall, if we go all the way up to the top of our app component, um, in, a, in our previous code, we would essentially we would pass the bridge. Right now we have a router outlet here. So our bridge info component would be here and we would pass uh, as a property, an input property that would get passed down and we would consume it. And But now what I need to do is I need to have my bridge info component. It needs to get access to whichever bridge the user has selected. Like you'll see my app is sort of working right now. Like when I'm clicking on different bridges, you can see that it's it's telling me which bridge I'm selecting because of the code that we have right here. But that's not exactly what I want to do because what I want to do is I want to kick off a request to the server to be able to make this happen. So what we need to do is we need to, our, um, our service needs another method. So the first thing I could do is I could essentially just like do what you're not supposed to do and copy and paste this. So I could have a get bridges and I could have a get bridge method. So I have two different methods. And if you want a specific bridge, you're gonna have to pass in a, an ID. So you're gonna have to pass in an ID as a string and I'm going to give you back an observable and the observable is going to return not an array of bridge IDs, but it's going to return an instance of a particular bridge. So I'm going to change the type of my observable like so. And my URL is going to change because I need to, I basically need to put the ID on the URL like this. Now, while we're talking about URLs, I want to tell you about something that I'm concerned with here. And that is, I don't like the fact that I'm hard coding a URL to my development machine into the system. Like I want you to think about this. If we were going to deploy this, so I'm a developer on a big team and I'm working for company x.com. And so x.com is going to have this service running. They're not going to run it off my laptop. They're not going to run it on localhost 3000 when they put it up in the cloud and they put it up on their servers. So this URL is useful only for the development situation, but it's not going to be useful for other situations. So what I really need to do, the typical way we solve this in an application, you know, in something like uh, React or Angular or any of these things is we move configurable pieces of data like API URLs. We move them into the environment or move them into environment variables. Or in the case of in the case of working with Angular, we can actually um, we could use the we could use the environment that's already set up. So one of the directories that got created for me, I'm just going to copy my URL here. like so. And actually I'll keep, I'll do this. Okay, this is the URL that I'll work with. So inside of our uh, environments, what we can do is we have two files here. We have an environment and we also have an environment for production. And you can have as many of these environments as you want. So a typical scenario that you would have you would have a developer working on their local machine. You would have a production environment where it's running on the, you know, it's scaled and running on the, the, the cloud, however the company runs it normally for its customers. And then you might also have a third instance, which could be a staging environment. So the staging environment would be a duplicate of everything that the production environment is going to be like, 
but it's a way for you to test it on production without putting it in production. So you have a development environment, a staging environment, and a production environment, and you could have even more environments than that. So I'm going to have production and, and a dev environment here. So in my, um, in my dev environment where I'm working, I'm going to define that my API URL is going to be equal to this. So instead of using this string directly, I never want to put this string in my code. I want to be able to use environment.api URL. And that can change based on the configuration that however I run my environment. So when I build my code, if I do a production build, for example, it's going to use this other file. So let's say over here, I'm going to save that. In my production environment, let's say that I'm working at this company and the company's uh, services run at HTTPS API.company.com like that. And when we run this thing in the cloud, that's the URL that we're supposed to use. Okay, so we have two different endpoints that we could hit depending on, on the work that we're doing. So I'm going to save this and we have two different environments that we can work with here. Now inside of our, our data management our data service, what I can do is I can import the environment. Uh, where are we here? Environments, environment. So I'm going to import it from environment. And when the code gets built, Angular is going to help me determine which of these environments needs to get used. So what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to say const URL is equal to, and I'm going to say um, that I want to use, uh, basically I, I want to have, well, let's just put it on my class. Actually, let's keep this simple. So let's say uh, API URL is a string, and it's going to be equal to environment.api URL, like so. Now here I can say this.api URL, and then I'm going to say bridges. And that means that I can remove this and I can put URL. And down here I can do the same sort of thing. So I can say const URL is equal to the API URL slash uh, bridges slash, and now I need the ID that the, has been passed to me on this function. So then I'm going to put in the ID like that, and I'm going to stick the interpolated URL in here like that. So this code is a little bit cleaner because it's going to work as I configure it for different environments, or if I like, you know, if I move this, like, let's say, for example, I don't want to run on port 3000. Let's say I want to run on port 8000. Easy. I can come into my environment and I can set it up so that it'll it will change it and run it appropriately. So here, let's save this. And if we take a look at the network, we should see the bridges. Yes, here it is. You can see that the response went through HTTP localhost 3000 API bridges like this. Okay, that's great. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to make use of this API call right here. I want to get back a full bridge instance, and I want to make use of it inside of my map component, my bridge info component here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an update to the bridge info component here. So let's just review what's happening. Right now we have we have a member, which is a bridge, and the bridge is going to get, um, well, actually we're not setting it yet. That's our final goal. But what we're doing right now is when the component initializes, we're taking this activated route dependency, which has been injected into our uh, component, and we are setting up a subscription, and we're basically listening for these parameters on the routes to change. So if the, if the route, is updated, we're going to get those parameters and we're going to pull the ID off of this, like so. We'll pull it off so we have access to it like this. 
And what we want to do is instead of doing a console log like this, let's get rid of this. I want to take, well, first of all, I need my data service. So let's inject our data service again. Let's import our data service, data um, manager service from our data manager service class. Let's inject that as a dependency into our class. So we're going to inject our data service like so. And then when we initialize, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the data manager service and we're going to call the get bridge method. Get bridge takes a string and the string is going to be whatever the ID is on the parameters of the active route. We're going to do that. And then we're going to subscribe to here. Let's we're going to subscribe to the response. And inside here, we're going to say that when it comes back, we want to take the data that comes back and we want to set this dot bridge equal to that data. like so. So this is going to get updated, but you can see we have a whole bunch of different asynchronous calls happening here. So we're dependent upon information coming back. We need to observe the route to know when the route changes. So whenever somebody clicks on a different, when they click on this one, it's going to change the parameter in the route. We want to get a notification. We want to observe that. And then when that happens, we want to trigger a call to our data manager service to get the, all of the data for that particular bridge. When we get that back, we want to stick it into the instance that's here. And then in our component, our component is going to pass that bridge down into the map and into the rest of our app, which is similar to what we were doing before. So let's try this. Let's save this. And let's see, connection refused, connection refused. Oh, it looks like I have a typo in my environment. Environment, yeah, 3000. Beautiful. So you can see that now it's possible to deep link into our app. So if I were to, let's run the app. If I run like this with nothing on the URL, it's going to redirect me to bridges and it's gonna show all of the bridges that are, th that are here. And if I click on a bridge, it's going to get that ID like so. And it's gonna update we scroll through the list, you can see that everything's working, working the way that we would expect it to. Now, it's possible to do a bunch more work with observables and the HTTP client code in order to clean up some of the things that we're doing here. So for example, it's possible, one of the things you'll see in a lot of the code is you'll see them write things like they'll take this response and they'll pipe this into another set of uh, another set of observables another set of observers rather and so they'll say i want to take this and i want to do various things with it like for example it's common for them to add something like retry so every time that this fails i want to retry it and have it happen again or i want to deal with errors, I want to catch an error and I want to call this dot handle error. I want to handle errors when we're doing it. And as we go further with this, we can use more pieces of this. Today, I'm trying to keep it fairly simple so that it doesn't get overly complicated. So if I get rid of 
rid of this. I'm just passing along the observable and the observable is then used inside of my other components, inside of my um, menu component and inside of my bridge info component. They both have access to, uh, to work with these. So that's probably a good, a good place to pause. And um, we've covered a lot of ground here. We've, we've been able to create our own API HTTP API, we dealt with cores and being able to share data with different origins. We've been able to pull in routing, work with routing in the app, and we've been able to define all of our own routes so that we can specify, you can go to a, a deeper into our app and get to a bridge. We've made it possible to deep link into the app. So it's still a single page app, but now we have this illusion that you can request resources deep in, inside of the app. We've modified things so that we have a data manager service and the data manager service is taking care of connecting to an API endpoint. We've been careful to keep our API endpoint URLs. We've put them into the environment so that it's easy to configure them. It's easy to swap out and use different ones. We are converting our um, JSON data that comes back from the server into the appropriate types in the app. So we're using the HTTP client service. We're injecting that here and we're using that in order to pull this. And then we're able to subscribe on these observables and we're able to get back the data and do something with it to show the data or make use of it. So I'm going to put all this code on GitHub. You can, uh, you can work through it and have a look at it and make sure you're understanding the different pieces and compare it with uh, what you're learning in the notes this week. And um, if you have any questions, we should talk about them online. Otherwise, we will continue with more videos next week.